I was invited to give a golden jubilee address in Hoyleton. Yes, yeah, yeah, so the software center. I was the youngest international. Yes, yeah, I, I know the place. Yeah, so in 53. 53. I was 35, now I'll be entering my 80th year. Have you ever been back there? No. It's still yeah, there. It's yeah, still there. From years ago, with Robert's car. Just to so we're there. Just to see. Nostalgic and that uh, the reasons. <laughs> so it was the first time you were in Holland? No, I was here much earlier. But first two times, yes. Hmm. I don't know, first or second time. So you actually you started storytelling already when you didn't know what to say. You just said I words. didn't know. Yeah, yeah, empty words and empty phrases. Yes. yes. <laughs> there's a, there's a, my father made a record of me and I'm a very small kid yeah. in, in, in the cradle and I'm I acting as if I have a cigar and go like, and I'm still doing this. It's <laughs> very strange. I, I gave a public lecture in Brussels the same year. I was an international lecturer of the Peace Office. I was so proud, I'm a 35 year old fellow. And it was supposed to be a public lecture, and there were 28 people, I counted them. And, uh, Twenty-five out of them were old women in tennis shoes, uh, <laughs> sitting there with a basket in their lap, knitting some stuff for their children or grandchildren. <laughs> and I used to speak for 45 minutes and to open uh, 15 minutes for them to ask questions. Some lady got up and asked me a question, do roses reincarnate, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to spend the rest of my life? <laughs> Answering such questions, addressing such people, there on the spot I decided that's the end of this kind of a lecture. <laughs> and then I walked out. <laughs> but do roses incarnate? You are asking me. <laughs> Is there any such thing as reincarnation? I must tell you something else. The same year, that is 1925, that was rather, my English is getting worse because of sitting next to an American. <laughs> you see, so uh, at that time, you see, those were the eight days of Krishna Mukti's world teacher. Yes, right. And there were three, big three, four thousand uh, delegates. And when you are introduced to somebody, you see, you see I am UG, what is your name? You see, that's the way the introductions uh, occur. And so they always introduce themselves as I was Queen Victoria in my past life, what were you? <laughs> I'm not joking. I'll say. No. So they grabbed all the historical figures, all the religious people, not, even these names of the stars, there was nothing left for me. <laughs> I was so depressed, dejected, dispirited, and disheartened, and walked away. <laughs> yes. That was the end of my interest in reincarnation. <laughs> yes. Although the whole Hindu structure is built on the foundation of reincarnation, I had great difficulty see, to handle and the Theosophists believe that, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. something fundamental. And so I had problem as a lecturer and I avoided talking to the members and they only public lectures and got away with that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I heard that uh, heaven seems to be full too. <laughs> yes. No, any nobody fits anymore. No, because of the overpopulation. No, so overpopulation. Some priests who had, uh, came back from this death experience uh, yeah. explained that you couldn't get in. Yes. So everybody goes straight no, to hell now. Now it has become fashionable yeah. everywhere. The near death experience. The near death experience. Near yes. death experience. Yes. That's very strange. Yes. Big. Yeah. And so I had to meet all these people in Australia. Mm -hmm deal with them and it's very difficult. They describe the so-called non-existing death experience in exactly the same language. You see the tongue yeah. you see that. And it's very difficult to make people uh, understand that there is no such thing as death for this living organism. You see, it's a definition. You see, the doctors uh, examine um, the body if you want to use uh, uh, Double uh, to emphasize that uh, it's a dead cause, not just a dead person. They'll come and examine the body and, uh, and tell you that he's 
she or it is dead. It's just a definition, but you can, you don't preside over your own death. You are not there. What you call you has to come to an end first before what is called death can take place. But as a matter of fact, death is the beginning of uh, other forms of life. I may not uh, continue to be in this safe shape and form. And you don't even experience the death of others. What you experience is that there is no way you can keep the relationship going. And what you are experiencing is the void that is created by what is called a death. So this body has no way of knowing that it is alive at this moment. I can tell you, if you ask me, are you alive or dead, I would say, yes, I am very much alive. Because I have to use the knowledge that is given to me by the doctors, by the physiologists, use that knowledge and experience what they are telling me how a, a living person uh, functions, uh, responds, uh, and experiences things. So it, the same is uh, true of your health. Health is a definition. You know. This disease also is a definition. These are all definitions. I maintain and emphasize and overemphasize all the time that what you do not know you cannot experience it. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, it must be experiences or learned. Knowledge that is put in, passed down to us, yeah. not necessarily as concepts, as ideas, mm. but uh, as uh, uh, something that is possible for you through the use of that knowledge to experience it. So you know, you know Byron Katie's system, huh? uh, just yeah. by simply asking yourself the question, is it true? Uh, how, how do I know it's true? You know, you already discovered just an idea or a story that you tell yourself. But I don't know what uh, she means when she says whatever she is saying. To me, uh, is there any such thing as truth? Is there such anything as what? As truth. As truth. truth is, is there such anything as truth? Yes, Only know. to the reference point imagining it attached to it in the moment. So I join there and the answer is no. And I join in that place of apparent understanding to reach mm -hmm. the point, finally, of from where UG is speaking. It gives everyone the experience that does that loop, that circle, the experience that I'm hearing from UG. But are you not translating this, uh, whatever statements, uh, quote unquote, I'm making? Within the framework of the experiencing structure. Now, I'm not questioning you, you see, but I, I, I understand. No, I'm trying to understand uh, what you are trying to say. You see, to me, as a student of philosophy, student of um, religions, I studied all the religions as a student of philosophy. I'm very familiar with all that stuff. But is there any such thing as truth? The question itself is false. Yes. Because there is an assumption that there is such a thing as a truth. Right. And you can write books on the origin of truth and uh, your experience of truth. It is a logically ascertained premise. There is a truth. If I say that this is the truth, it is no longer true and valid even for me. So what I am telling people is, whatever I am saying is not valid and true even for me. Mm. So if you accept that, you are putting yourself on a merry-go-round. Yes. So, so it is a, a, a logically ascertained premise. There is such a thing as truth. It is, it is a movement. You see. It is a, uh, like life. Life itself is a movement. So you cannot capture and contain and give expression to life. No. But what we are dealing with is not life, but living. Living has become a problem. The living is created, this is how you should live, this is the meaning of life, this is the purpose of life. And there we are stuck with these uh, concepts that you, you have to find out the meaning of life, you have to find out the purpose of life. A living thing never asks those questions. Anything that we want to know is uh, put in there by our culture or by our society. So, 
what is the truth? That question itself is absurd. And it is born out of the assumption that there is such a thing as truth. So if there is any such thing as truth, there is no way you can capture it. Even what is called beauty, you see, the moment you say that it is beautiful, the sunrise is beautiful, you have already put it in a frame, you know, and otherwise you will never tell you that, that that is a beautiful thing out there. So if you ask for me, you say, I see a beautiful girl, is she beautiful or ugly? I wouldn't say she's an ugly duckling by our definition, you see, passed on to me. I have to call that person, but uh, a beautiful person, or it's a beautiful uh, scene. So, so the, to, me, to me, everything uh, that is born out of thought is uh, a pleasure moment. I'm not, I'm not uh, condemning anything. See, I'm not condemning pleasure. It's a sensual activity. Mm -hmm. Anything that is born out of thought is a sensual activity. So eating uh, 14 course meal or having fun with varieties of birds is exactly the same as far as I am concerned. You see, you know, when once that is a fact, you will not do this, you will not do that. You see, all those people who uh, practice celibacy, who practice uh, all the virtues and their the holy business, they are all very fat people. You see, they eat yes. and eat and eat. Yeah. Even Buddha had a big, uh, not the Gandhara sculpture that they created uh, in India, you know, that is uh, uh, Alexander's idea when he invaded India, <laughs> you see. Some Greek artist created that uh, Buddha. But actually and factually, it's a big stomach. You know? So, so he, he doesn't seen... need any tables, he can put his mm. computers on that mm -hmm. or even mm -hmm. typewriters yeah. and type on it. And then yeah. you can have yeah. your tray, your <laughs> stomach. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, only, the only only thing that makes sense is to tell just stories, yeah, and, and, and see them as stories. But just yeah, stories. Then you call me an entertainer, and so if I'm an entertainer, I need to be paid. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> or I entertain myself. Yeah, isn't that no the case? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Mm. But the, you have every right to brush this aside and dub that label or force mm -hmm. that label on mm -hmm. me. You are after all an entertainer. They, they are all uh, entertained by me. But uh, am I? I? I don't know. Why not? Mm -hmm. It must bring some rewards, this entertainment. So for you too, it's, it's, it's uh, what, what you tell, it's all stories that we tell ourselves. And the moment we believe them, it's like, yeah, it's like uh, it's suffering, basically. That's the way it can be heard. Yeah. And if I tell it very simply and basically, everything UG says, again, the four questions give everyone the opportunity to experience what the man is ex apparently experiencing. Nothing. No one. Nowhere. Nothing. Four questions, um, you know, hearing you, Yu Chi, um, there's no one existing. A, a, a person could say, um, Yu Chi, um, what? What's an example? Yu Chi. You said yesterday, he's deadly. <clears throat> he's deadly. Yes. Deadly? Deadly. Mamma mia. Mamma mia. <laughs> you know that. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. 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 Right. So, Yuji. Yuji. From the question, Yuji is deadly. For you to, to see me as existing as all, at all, as any more or less, then you exist as a thing. I could only see as a response, just as you say, a computer coming at me. And when it's argued or dialogue done around it, we could say, um, UG exists. Is it true? Can you really know that? 
what you get for holding the belief. These are meditations to go inside for people who think there is existence to go in and see the no pain, experience it, not see it. And what do we get without it? And what happens is we end up with no UG and no one to experience UG. It can't be known until it's gone into an experience. I have no interest in how people see me. I have no control over that. I don't, um, I could say actually that it's just me experiencing me anyway. I have no interest in it. No interest in it. What I do have an interest in is union. Union at some level. It appears to be my nature. And nothing I say is true. And as you would say, why am I talking? What I know I do like is to hear, to be in the presence of the non-presence. The union of that, the experience of that. There is, there is nothing that anyone can say that is, that has any meaning for me. There's no one for it to have meaning. It's very interesting sitting here. There's not a lot I could say to you. There's no one to listen. And there's no one to speak. What I do know is being here is... Um, can't even say that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. So... No comments. Like no comments. Politicians. Uh, <laughs> gimmicks. <laughs> gimmicks. Apparent gimmicks. No, no, I'm not uh, saying anything. Well, I, I'd love no, to join there. you me. And you, gee, yeah. I'd love to join there. Let's, let's say that the way that it was picked up on is gimmick. And I would love, I, I respect our friendship, and I would ask you um, the four questions or anything from anyone is a gimmick. Can we know that? So the way I put it would be different. There are no questions at all. The questions I need to ask how to get to this place and what is the easiest way of, or cheapest way of traveling from here to Freiburg or wherever I am going. What mode of transportation? These uh, questions are very essential to ask. And otherwise, you cannot function in this world sanely and intelligently. Mm -hmm. But all the other questions we ask are born out of the answers we already have. Otherwise, there can't be any questions at all. So actually and factually, you don't want any answers for the questions. You see. Yes. So any answer, I'm not giving any answers to the questions at all. I'm just pointing out one thing, that that you are not really interested in getting any answer to the question. You only want a confirmation of the answers that you already have. Yeah. And so if uh, I don't confirm, you reject it. If it fits into that framework, the knowledge you already have, you accept it because this answer strengthens and fortifies the very thing that you want to hold on. Yes. So the next thing is that uh, I, we must deal with is that uh, there is no question there, but there is only questioner there. See, the question and questioner are one and the same. We think that the questioner is different from the question. So if there is any answer, I don't have any answers for any questions except the questions we need to ask to function in this world. Mm -hmm how that is working, and he can teach me, he is an expert, and by repeating see, my efforts to end with that camera, I will learn how to do it, that's all. Only in that area, they have the answers. Through repetitive process, we learn something. Mm -hmm. Since there is no uh, questioner there, but there is only one question, I am saying that, but you think that there is somebody who is asking the question. But if there is any answer to that question, the question should disappear. And along with the question, the questioner also goes. 
you yeah. see. Yeah. And so you want an answer that will strengthen and fortify the very answer that you have. You know. So you are not in a position either to accept what I am saying or reject what I am saying. You accept it because it strengthens and fortifies the very thing that you think is the real answer. So you accept it. You try to fit this into that framework and feel very strong. See that it is confirmed by somebody like me. You reject it because it is undermining the very foundation of you see, the the answering mechanism that is there inside of you. So you really don't want any answer for that question. If there is any answer to that question, the question disappears. And along with it, the non-existing question occurs. And along with that, the question is born out of the answer. That also goes. You are not ready for that kind of a thing because you have invested tremendous faith in that person who has given the answer. So, Mm. Sentimentality comes into the picture and you are not ready to brush aside the answers that you already have along with that the person who has given you see those answers for your non-existing questions. And we mostly go to the people who we know will give the right answers. Confirm. Confirm. You are interested in the confirmation yes. but not any answers for your questions because all questions are the variations of the same question. Right? Mm -hmm. So you are not really interested in any answer for that question because that would be the end of you as you know yourself and as you experience yourself. You that is why I say, is it possible for you? As a matter of fact, you have never looked at anything in your life except to project the knowledge you have on what you are looking at. So if you are lucky to be free from the stranglehold of thought, you will be surprised how this living organism is functioning, how this sensory activity that is there is so extraordinarily alert, you see. So it is no way you can say to yourself that you have at any time looked at anything. As a matter of fact, when the knowledge you have of the things out there and what is happening inside of you is not there, it is always there, of course. You don't know whether you are looking at that and say that it is breathing. As a matter of fact, what all we were taught by the, the scientists, and whatever we learned from all of them is false, because the physical eye does not look at the tree as a round. Whoever told me that the tree is round misled me and misguided me and put me on the wrong track. The physical eye does not see the other side of the so it sees only one side and you have to tell yourself that it is flat and it is not round. That is the way the physical eye is looking at the things. Another thing is the physical eye does not look at the space. So all the talk, those physicists who talk about, you see, the third dimension, fourth dimension, all that is absolutely very short, absolute nonsense. And so what I am saying is the physical I cannot see the depth at all. What it sees is like the painting on the wall, the photo on the wall. There is no depth. So anybody who says that I see the depth there is kidding himself and kidding everybody. So I tell people if Weinstein were to be here, I would finish him in one second. See? One second. <laughs> if he is intelligent enough to understand mm -hmm. what I'm trying to put across. Mm -hmm. For example, I give you, you see, this is very essential to focus on what I'm trying to say. Sometimes these physicists come and one nuclear physicist visited me. And we talked at great length about space, matter and time. I listened to that crap for half an hour. And he said, there's no such thing as a space. Oh, I'm delighted that you have discovered that there is no such thing as a space. Does it operate in your life? I asked him. It's a theory. You are like a metaphysician coming out with the theories. Scientists are no different from metaphysicians. So if, as you say, there is no such thing as space, and you are asserting that there is no such thing as space, and you are telling me that you can experience space, you are kidding yourself and you are not kidding me. 
I asked you one fundamental question. You are about to make love to your wife or your girlfriend. If there is no space, as you maintain that there is no such thing as space, can there be love making? Finish. Said like this. Do you know what it means? <laughs> the whole scientific thinking. We are so proud of collapses. It never occurred to me like that. If what you are saying is true, but I want to believe that you are wrong. What would happen to me? I have to work as a dishwasher somewhere to survive in this world. So all this talk that there is no such thing as matter, there is no such thing as time, that there is no such thing as space, and they go one step further and say what is called four-dimensional space-time continuum. It is absolute rubbish. It's as much an aberration as the religious thinking is. Mm. They are not ready to accept that. Unfortunately, they have become the handmaids of the state, just the way the religion was the handmaid of the state. And the state used them as instrument of power. It's the same everywhere. If the state had not used them and you see, as an instrument of power, Buddhism would have remained a small cult, Christianity would have remained a they became the instruments of the power. In exactly the same way, those people who are coming out with all kinds of theory, you know, they are only interested in prestigious awards and Nobel Prizes. That's all. They come up with one theory today, Congrats. another fellow comes along with another theory, and there is uh, order in the universe. Fine, I'm delighted that there is order in the universe. He gets one Nobel Prize. Another joker comes along and says there is only chaos. He gets a Nobel Prize. And the third chap, he comes along and says, I see both chaos and order in the same place. You will get another Nobel Prize. What is the actual situation? Is there chaos or is there an order? Why the hell am I interested that there is order or chaos in this universe? I am only interested in making a living. Where my next meal will come from? Who will provide me a shelter over my head here? That's all, these are the basic things uh, I am interested in. But as far as this living organism is concerned, it is not interested in any of the ideations, any of these mentations that they are receiving. You see, <coughs> when you say you're interested in, in where your next meal comes or your shelter, I don't believe you. <laughs> no, 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 but this uh, organism is interested only in two apps, I'm sorry to use this word. UG, Food and uh, happy. UG, I Other don't... than that, anything that we... Uh -huh want to know what they are trying to teach me has no relevance at all. So what are you going to say? No, no, sorry. I say much too much. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> all right, I'm... I heard you say that it's essential that we understand you, hear you, and I don't believe you believe no, It is not a question of belief, uh, a question of you believing or not believing. I understand. No, no, but uh, that I'm is the way to focus the thing that the living organism is not interested in anything other than this basic thing. And I can tell you one thing, I can tell you one thing, you see, people don't believe me when I say that amongst my needs, the food is at the bottom of my needs, and money is on the top. You see, so when I say that uh, money is at the top, you see, you don't function like that, you have given away crores and crores of rupees. And now how can you say that uh, is at the top, you see? It is not a means of security for you. There is another thing that if, uh, that is the one and the only need for you. Money is all that matters to you. And you don't think of anything other than money. And you don't even find out, you see, or ask the question, how do I get uh, the money to take care of my uh, food, clothing and shelter? It is never a problem there. It is not some mysterious way that money comes to you. I don't know if I make the, my point. But sir, come on. You see, yeah. as, as you talk, it's almost, and we could even say apparently, uh, cut one off, we could say. It's as though you belong to a very exclusive club that doesn't allow the other. And it's not so much the way I hear it, it's, it's what I'm hearing. It's almost as though it's theory after theory, and 
if I were to have one, that would be it. Yours would be it. What I invite Can't people die. to do <laughs> is is to enter that same that same awareness that you apparently experience in a way that gives them an option. An invitation is is not the same as a needing or a wanting. It's a simple offering that that would allow um, one to the experience that I see you in is complete. Uh, I don't know. I don't get what you are saying, but I didn't either. No, you see what what I. <laughs> Uh, I'm saying that that when when you when you speak, it it appears to assume that you are the only one that may have the understanding. When, of course, we all do, and I know you know that. I just find it fascinating the way the apparent organism sings. No, what I am. Sounds. I'm moves. sorry. What I am emphasizing is a very simple thing. This living organism and that living organism, or the living organism of all those people around here, are functioning in exactly the same way, exactly the same way. Yes. There is no need for them to learn anything from anybody. You see. So whatever we are telling ourselves and others, what is good for this living organism? Is false as far as it, this body is concerned. I am only emphasizing one thing: how this body functions with such alacrity and such intelligence, unparalleled. See, so we don't give this any chance to function. This world say the end. That would almost be like the last concept to go. No, I am like a dog. A dog. Uh, Somebody even put it in the newspapers headline. U. G. calls himself a rat in this clear water. It's no different from me. As far as it is not that I tell myself I am not different from that. Then that means it is the same old story. You know. Yes, I, uh, yes. I am the tree. I am that. But to emphasize the point that there is basically, essentially, fundamentally, no difference between that and me. Unfortunately. The culture, or civilization, or society, or whatever you want to call it, created this kind of human species. And you, G, I'm Would, hearing that you just created it. Not me. They created me. And whatever I and say, is, is whatever I true? think, whatever I experience is what is put in here. So I say there is not one thing which I can call my own. Not one thing. Not you one learned, word. You learned everything. Huh? You picked up everything from your parents. From One of these days, I say there is no such thing as creativity. There is no such thing as originality. This is what I can say. Mm -hmm. There is not one word, not one thought, not one experience which I can call it's endless repetition. Everything I may not know where I picked up that and put this in, into this. Right. Yeah. There will come a time when these computers will tell all those people who think that they are very creative and original the source of their material. How you see it is created. So the one difference between the computers created by the humans, and they feel so proud that you are, they are responsible for the computer. Mm -hmm. And this computer is that it never. Supposing you ask a question, it never says it is such. Never says it is such, because there is no need for this to search for anything. And if the is not there in the memory bank or the data bank, the information, it is silent. It doesn't even say to itself or to somebody. Yes. It is not found in the memory bank yeah. or data. Bank. Yeah. If it is there, it comes out. Yeah. So I am not involved in whatever I am coming. That is why I tell my friend who is now one of the top movie directors. Mahesh Bhai, the author of my so-called biography, don't quote the source. You are original. So the moment you quote the source, you are giving importance. That is the reason why see, I say that intellectual property right. It's like grabbing this property mm -hmm. and calling it mine. 
we are not honest or decent and decorous enough to admit that there is nothing which is original here. Everything is taken from outside. Mm. And so these computers will tell you very soon where you picked up that information. Now you have changed it into this and claim originality and uh, to establish copyright. And then everybody is uh, uh, demanding, you see, to every nation it must to sign you know, that, uh, intellectual property yeah. rights. So when we are born, you can say, we don't think. You see, anything I say about how I was like when I was born mm -hmm. is a speculation is sure. on my part. There sure. is no way I can look back and tell myself hmm. I was functioning like that. So that is why I sometimes uh, say these uh, very absurd things. Once I, somebody interviewed me there in London TV, Asia TV or something, I said all mothers are monsters. Mm -hmm. And my interviewer said, I have four children. How can you say that I am a monster? And I said, uh, no, if you don't like that, if it pleases you, let me add one thing more. Children are no angels. So what about husbands? And she said, they don't count at all. <laughs> and that created a very awkward situation for me. And the calls, telephone calls lasted for three days. <laughs> How can you say such a thing from Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, all over? And one woman who was there ready to give birth to her child, she called me in her broken English. How can you say such a thing? And what do you want me to do with my child that is going to arrive very soon? Abandon the child. <laughs> and so what I am trying to say is, where actually it begins, you see, the brainwashing. But kiss of the mother is the beginning of the separation. What I am trying to say is, then goes on, which I am here your mother and that is your father. I didn't see my father for the first five years of my life. If my mother died when I was seven days old. Mm -hmm. They introduced that from now on I have to call this guy my father. How the hell do I know that it is my father? Mm -hmm. you see? And from that moment onwards, every time I meet him, I have to call him my father. Even today I introduce my daughter as my daughter. I don't have any actual and factual relationship with anybody, you know. And so I say, that's my daughter. And just to say that that is, happens to be my daughter and not your daughter or somebody else's daughter. This is only for purposes of communication. Other than that, you know. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything at all. Yuchi, my experience with uh, existence, first existence, is um, it's interesting to hear you, and as you were speaking, my experience was not when mother kissed me for the first time, but when I attached to that, when it, when I put meaning to it, not one second ago. Not you, the child. I'm talking about the child. I as the child. I yes. don't know. I can't say anything about how I was back uh, as a child, but this is what uh, I observed, you see. Uh, you gee. Mother, I, I, learned, me I tell you, I learned more from my own son, whom I uh, looked after for two years, from the, a few minutes after he was born until he was two years. I can tell you I have learned more from him than from all the spiritual and secular teachers put together in this world. Whatever I say is not what I have learned from them, say the teachers. But what I observed, my very observation, of course, is colored by my upbringing, by my culture. Ideas, yeah. So there is no way you can look at anything without uh, projecting your ideations and mentations from that. Yeah. Yeah. Now the scientists are also telling. We're saying the same thing. Can you hear it? I yeah. don't even hear what I'm saying. No. That's my problem. But I, what I like is when the first sounds that the human being makes more, 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 and murders immediately, that's me. They yeah, claim it immediately, you know. <laughs> anyway, no, after a while, you see, nobody has come up with any idea of how to educate children no. without destroying the native intelligence and innocence they are born with. Mm. It's very difficult. Nobody has come up with any idea. And it is not possible because they themselves want to be accepted by us. 
and we are living in this world. This is a reality. And so they have to fit into this framework, however ridiculous the framework may yes. be. So if we try to educate them in any other way, other than this way, we get into trouble, they get into trouble. Yes, they all trouble. become yes. misfits in this yes. structure. You see, the problem here is, I am not in conflict with the society. I am not in conflict with the value system created by our culture. And I use the word culture. I only mean that it is a way of life and a way of thinking. I think that's, I'm yeah. not talking of any other culture. <clears throat> you can exchange that way for a million other ways. A million other yeah. It's all part of that. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that uh, there is no way you can function, survive intelligently in this world without accepting the fact that value system, however rotten it may be, I have to fit into that value system. Why am I educated? Why do I go to this university? Why do I have to acquire a tool? And I'm not hearing that you fit in to, um, yeah. to the system. I am part of this. I cannot separate myself. I cannot think of any other uh, system, but I am not in conflict with that system. I hear that. Why people are in conflict? You see, the uh, mad people, uh, for example, I have known lots of them. And they have given up. They don't want to be part of that value system. And we force them. Isn't it? There is no the line of demarcation between me and Maddie is very thin. They don't want to fit themselves into that value system. I am not in conflict with that value system. There is nothing wrong with this value system. So what I am saying is that value system is created by our society or by our teachers as a model for everybody. And we have four creatures in that. And that value system <coughs> is modeled after the so-called spiritual teachers. You see, you have to be like those fellows, you know. That is the model for you. And you have to be like that. And so you have got to fit into this uh, model. And this is created, that as we say, model. And this value system prepares you to be that one. Even so, the speaking of it almost assumes that that's your value system, and I can't hear that it is. No, I don't have any value system. I am not in yeah. conflict with uh, that system at all. But yeah. I don't accept uh, the great spiritual teachers as a model for me. They are all thrown out of my system. You see, so uh, I have no problem there. See. I can function in this world without any problems. And why people are suffering because they don't, they don't want to put themselves into the value system. And the situation we find ourselves in forces us to accept that and be part of the value system. That is why there is a suffering. That is why there is misery. That is why they have all these problems. You know? Our semantics are fascinating. Hmm? Our semantics are, semantics are fascinating. I don't know. So, semantics? The way the meaning of the same thing said so many different ways. That's the only thing that we can do to emphasize uh, some something. See, yes. There is no question uh, of uh, uh, trying to communicate anything to anyone. Yes. It's not just possible. I was saying a while ago before you came. It's not a possibility. The conversation between two persons, whether it is with the mother and the child, or you see the husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, your boss, your servants, your uh, colleagues, your boss, is only for one purpose, and that is to make them do the things exactly the way you want them to do. Mm. Otherwise, there is no need for any conversation at all. Mm. So forget about communication. There is no way you can communicate anything during the course of these conversations. So but we, we, for, uh, we come to a point where that fellow says <laughs> that you were a point of view. Fine, that is my point of view. What about you, was buddy? But I have one last question yeah. because we have five minutes left. Good. Do we have to for one hour? No, no, we, we can talk on, but I have one last question. I can sit here and talk for 24 hours. I know, I know. <laughs> but if we talk, let's say we talk for 24 hours, then after it's over, after it's over, what's left over 
is perhaps not the words. No, but the pain but within it. Pain <laughs> <with you? laughs> vocal cord. And a feeling. Your, no, no feeling. Only vocal, no feeling? vocal cord. And then you will have some sore throat or something. Like that. And nursing has happened. <coughs> huh? And nursing has happened. Listen, one thing, you know, you don't seem to understand. This is only five minutes. <laughs> See, the, the, you know, the memory, thought, consciousness, it is noise. Forget about the subconscious, unconscious, all the rubbish they talk mm -hmm. about. So you have to, even when you are talking to yourself, you have to produce these sounds. sounds. So what memory is, nobody knows. Whatever these brain psychologists and brain physiologists and all these people are talking about, the neurons and all that, we just forget it. You have to make that noise within yourself. Whether you speak aloud or to yourself. And so actually it is not here, the memory is not here. Every cell has a memory of its own. Yes. You see, it has to cooperate with the cell that is next to it because the survival of this cell depends upon the survival of this cell next to it. You this see. is a living organism functioning that way. So you have to make noise inside of you and you want to suppress that sound by repeating something else and then listening to the music uh, higher and higher and higher decibels of noise you have to produce to suppress this sound that is, is a part of your living organism. Mm. So Eugene, yes, I, would, I would ask you yes. what you get from holding on to that whole theory and if I believed you had the theory at all, which no. I don't. No, I am talking about the theories of others, not mine. Ah. What they have I been didn't telling, hear that part. What There's they so have passion. been telling me for centuries <laughs> They are not valid and true here. That's all that I am saying. So, I rejected them all. You see, then I didn't find anything in its place. But I knew. I don't even know who the hell am I. See, when somebody said that, uh, ask that fundamental question, who am I? Go into the nature of your real eye. I found only one eye and that was the first person singular pronoun. That's all. And why are those jakers telling me that you see, must find out the real I? And go into that step by step, logically, sanely, and intelligently, and find out the real I. I didn't find any other I there, other than the first person singular like pronoun. Mm -hmm. And when people talk, do you see that uh, the speaker, what is being said, more self-centered than I am. I visited a swami when I was young and stupid. I am still a stupid. <laughs> Eugene, if there was someone to talk to here, I would say it is very fine to be with you again. Mm -hmm. You are mistaken. So, you said, you said a while ago, I am deadly. <laughs> <laughs> that made a big impact, sir. That's right. well, that was just a hopeful, that was a hopeful statement. <laughs> <laughs> nice okay, meeting. we have been talking with uh, Byron Katie, who met UG in Palm Springs, yes. where you were living for part of the time. Yes. You travel all over the world, yes. so do you. And you're basically telling the same story, that it's all stories. If, uh, Just that. Why should mm -hmm. I deny that privilege of putting things that way? <laughs> <laughs> because you do. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. <laughs> that was so wonderful. <laughs> this I don't know, but it feels good. Why not? <laughs> Equal. Is not same. Oh, you still have some. <laughs> Take left.